It needs to hurry up because I did not come on here to work out in front of y'all. Hello, everyone. I'm disgusting. I'm trifling. You can throw stones. This is your window right here to judge me. And also my window to catch my breath. So, anywho, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm not even going to give you a disclaimer because my last video was me literally saying like, where is Alicia? MIA. And me explaining like I plan to come back full throttle and never did. Shame. But I will say off the record, on the record, I have been vlogging. I have video clips that I plan to like maybe just merge into one vlog because I've been vlogging since like October. My mother and I's trip, Christmas, going home. Did I do New Year's? I don't know if I did New Year's. Um, I went to Atlanta for a business trip with my mentor. I didn't vlog that much there because it was a business trip and I was a little tired. I went to California last week to visit my brother. I have clips from there. But the real of the real is vlogging takes a lot of time. Like I commend anyone who is a full-time vlogger who does edits and transitions and lightning and all these different things to their videos because it is no walking apart like this video that I'm uploading is literally me recording I'm probably not going to edit anything out so if there's something going on as I've said in my first video it's just going to be there we're going to keep it 100 on this channel but these take like two minutes because I'm just like uploading a video whereas when you vlog it's like oh let me show you this day and let me show you this day so I'm going to eventually upload those, but my goal is to really start posting at least once a week. So if you're someone I trust and someone I love, please hold me accountable. Please use that firm tone that normally gets people punched in the throat. Please, 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 because I love you and you have to love me enough to hold me accountable. Okay, so I thought my birthday would be an awesome time to relaunch my YouTube channel and to recommit myself publicly to a bunch of people with a letter to myself. Um, one of this woman that I absolutely love, she's a bae. Um, she did a Dear Me video. And then I went to YouTube and saw that a lot of people do this. So I'm going to probably tag my sister as well who has a YouTube channel and have her do one. Her birthday just passed. Um, so it's not too late for her to do one maybe to share a couple points from her birthday. But I just decided to put together five or six points that I am going to consider a public letter to myself and I wanted this video to be pretty short since it's a you know a relaunch um, and it's basically letter to self dear me hashtag by 23 hello 24 um, the things I learned while I was 23 the things I plan to um, incorporate in my life as with this coming year and just like tips to you all that maybe you need to hear okay so number one Alicia well dear Alicia number one you are good. You are beautiful. You are made in the best image ever. And you are capable of doing excellent in all departments because of whose image you've been made in. I made a post on Instagram a couple weeks ago and it was basically saying, like, this has been just like my thing for a while. That I heard this quote that was like, you, you can be the juiciest of peaches. And someone was still not like peaches. Like, and when I think about that, I chuckle because I'm like, who doesn't like peaches? But the reality is there are people who go into a grocery store and they will walk past peaches like they are the best thing walking. Like, I don't like peaches. They're disgusting. I mean, I walk past certain things like that as well. But then there's someone or a group of people who will come behind those same people or that person and be like, I need to stock up. This is my favorite fruit. 
Alicia, you are beautiful. And the people who pass you up, that's their preference, honey. You have to respect that. Because to someone else, you are everything and more. And regardless of man's opinion, when God was finished with you, he said, it is good. I mean, honey, it is, it is good. It's done. It's complete. It's lovely. It's altogether lovely, altogether wonderful. It is good. Okay. Um, and I mentioned that because of who I made in, you can be excellent in all departments. So yes, you know, I believe that I'm a beautiful person, but there should always be goal as women to just always work on ways to, I don't want to say enhance, but just like highlight, you know, sometimes I'll go outside and I'm like, look, sweats and a t-shirt, like my future bae is just going to have to love me as I am. And that's cool and everything, but I have to hold myself accountable from time to time and be like, Alicia, listen, men are visual before they're anything. Don't come out here looking like you working out and you ain't working out and you looking like somebody's tumbleweed. Okay. So be excellent in all departments because you are made in the image of someone who's in, who's excellent in everything he does. So you can't just be mediocre in how you present yourself. And don't be scared to let your light shine, honey. Okay? Because the God you serve does not he does not do mediocre. He does not do minimal. He is excellent in all areas. He exceeds the capacity limit. Okay? Number 2. Your relationship status is this big. Maybe smaller. I am single and honestly, being very transparent, being single has not been a problem for me as of yet. Like I have learned with moving away from home and being in a place by myself. I'm not by myself. Like I have family and friends out here. Praise God. I do have a church home and I do have, you know, friends that I call family and actual family where I am. But I've, I've removed myself from my immediate family and I moved to a different place. And I think the one thing most people, when they relocate or they're in a place of isolation at any season, think about is their relationship status. And so the vlog that I haven't posted yet was with my mom when we went to a Florida, we went to a singles retreat. The vlog that I haven't posted was one where I went to a singles retreat with my mother and we were with other singles, okay? So women and men from all over gathered together to come to a conference for four days to discuss how to enjoy your singlehood or your singleship or however you want to call it. And I'm not more advanced than the next person when it comes to where I am in my life of being single. Of course, I would like a companion from time to time. Of course, I think about marriage from time to time. Praise God, I have not thought about children yet. But I do think about marriage. And what I realized when I was there was when being single is just, it's this small. And for some reason, I feel like the people who make it so much bigger have a problem because they don't enjoy themselves. And I have learned while being here how to get up, go to the movies, go out to eat, go to events, enjoy a Saturday by myself in my home or just in public without the assistance of someone else. Now, I've also had to remind myself, Alicia, don't be out here isolating yourself, like tap into your friends and your family. But nonetheless, I have truly understood that it's okay to be single. Like it's almost a really good season to be in because you get to make selfish decisions and not selfish in a like malicious way. But when you're in a relationship, and I can speak on this because I was in a committed relationship for a long time, you have to share decisions with someone else. You have to be mindful of someone else's opinion. I was able to get up and move, and I can move tomorrow if I want. You know, granted, there's people here who would care and be like, where are you going? Why are you leaving? But I'm not tied to anyone to where I can't just leave or I can't drastically change the course of my life and affect someone else. I understand the value of being able to spoil myself now with my finances and just, just be out here living, really. So... This is just, like I said, little tips. So your relationship status is this big. Do not make it bigger than that. Ministry is so much bigger than just thinking about your love life. And when you meet your husband, honey, Alicia, baby girl, he is going to be fire, okay? He is going to demand so much more of you. So enjoy this season of 
working on yourself. Enjoy this season of being ruffled in different areas so that when those areas can be perfected, so that when you meet your your husband, you can be a better helpmate to him and that you can actually assist him in ministry and that you have, you know, control over your flesh and your tongue and you don't have a bad attitude and you're clean and you have better stewardship over your money and you have a discipline to work out and you know how to cook because you've taken cooking classes and you're creative and you know how to get up in the morning and be a Proverbs 31 woman. Enjoy this season because honey, when he comes, everything that you were supposed to get from this season will be demanded of you in that season. And he's going to want someone who is stable by themselves, who isn't a deficit, but adds to the table. So maximize this season of being single. And if your faith is what you say it's to be trust that God has you in the season for a reason and that when he comes baby girl so much more is going to be expected of you and that if you truly find joy in waiting on the Lord this is not a season to grumble and grunt and complain and be weary and wavering enjoy this time and I mentioned like being able to do things and spend money and just like be by myself and come and go as I please but I've also learned how to pray and worship and really have peace in my home I've learned how to get up in the middle of the night and say you know God something feels heavy there's a void in my stomach or something doesn't feel right or I'm longing for something and I need to talk to you about it I want a husband that when I get married he's not gonna look at me crazy if I wake up at three in the morning and go into prayer or go into worship if anything I want him to get the unction to do the same And if he rolls over and go back to sleep, he's going to be like, I know she's praying so she can turn that music on or that light can come on. God, I thank you now for my husband. (laughs) But I'm not just praying for a husband because if you never send me one, that's the thing. If you never send me one, there is still a work to be done. So this season is, is joyful. I can help different places. I can volunteer. I can I can pick up jobs that help people. I literally have no commitment to no one but myself and the Lord. Number three, Alicia, you have issues with discipline and commitment. Fix them. So before we get this twisted, I'm not saying uh, relationship commitment. I'm saying like commitment to goals such as, here's an example, my YouTube channel. Sometimes I'll set out a goal and I have the intentions to do it and something else may take, you know, the lead as far as what's on my priority list. I need to fix that because that is still something like, okay, that's something that can trickle into other areas. So when I was thinking of discipline and commitment, I am publicly setting a goal out on my YouTube channel to be a better steward, to be disciplined in my health, and to be more committed to the goals I create. Okay? So like I said, I'm not saying commitment issues as far as relationships, but I am saying being committed and discipline to the things that I like attach myself to. So I want to be a better steward. The Lord has laid on my heart years ago and constantly reminds me, you can be a blessing to someone else in so many ways right now, but you're unable to because you don't have control over your money. Like, I mean, I'm not wasteful, but I, I see areas where I could probably be a blessing. You know, that freezer is full of food, yet I'm eating out tonight. Someone is missing a meal. Someone is going without this week and you're about to buy new groceries and you have a freezer full of food. You're tired because you're out of shape. So where someone needed you to go the extra mile, you were unable to. Someone wanted you to go for a walk with them so that you can pray with them, but you were too lazy. All you could think about was, why are we walking? And I'm just giving you like examples. But these are the things that the Lord has dropped in my heart to be disciplined about. This is my temple. You know, and as much as I enjoy food, I do think about the fact that if this is my temple, how do I want to present it to the Lord? How do I want other people to see me? I want to be able to run this race long term, long term. I want to be, I want to look like this when I'm 75, okay? I want people to be like, what's the secret? And I can really tell them, (laughs) eating right, praying, exercising, and being disciplined about it, being committed to that. I want to be disciplined in all areas because I believe we have a disciplined God. We serve a disciplined God. He was excellent in everything. And you only become excellent in something when you practice it. You practice your craft. Okay? Number five, there is purpose attached to you and someone needs it. And that's just a reminder to myself because I believe that a part of my calling is to educate. 
And I had to learn. I learned this, but I constantly have to remind myself of this because I am in school to get my license to teach. And I'm like, you know what, Lord? I'm a teacher whether I'm in the classroom or not. Every day that you allow me to see a new day, something was necessary for me to do. There was purpose attached to me. And there's something that I haven't fulfilled because you've branded me another day. I'm not done. Okay? And lastly, number six, learn to say no and be honest. I do not have an issue with saying no, but I think I want to I wanna gain this. I want the spirit of no to fall on me heavy. I mean, I want to be able to tell people no, like it's a new language. Like, do you are you bilingual? Yes, I speak English and no. Like, that's how I want to answer people. <laughs> I want to be like, I speak English and no. And they say, what's no? And I'll be able to elaborate. I want to also learn, I'm not a liar. I have to explain these because I don't want people to assume incorrectly. To be honest, I think a lot of people who are super nice sometimes mistaken letting someone down easily and lying like that they're not the same thing. And sometimes it is. I am learning, and I haven't mastered this, but like coming out of 23 and still into 24, that when you're honest with someone, you do both of you a favor. You you walk away honest with yourself. You haven't denied yourself how you feel. You're not putting yourself in a box. And you also give the person that you supposedly care about the ability to respond maturely, to maintain their integrity, to show their character, and to be able to just deal with what you just said. And so when we lie to a person, we comfort them, but we also, we take, we take away from them the ability to really see a situation for what it is. And so this might be confusing and I can elaborate on this in another video, but my last point for my letter is to be honest and to say no. And so I want to be able to say no when anything is toxic, when anything does not sit well with me. If I don't have a piece about it, I want to say no. And even be able to say I'm going to have to say no right now until I have a piece about it. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit gives us that gut feeling to know when something's worth accepting and when something's worth passing. And I want to listen to that Holy Spirit. I don't want to be so close to the Holy Spirit or to God that when he tells me to say no, I say yes. And I'm missing his ability to protect me or his ability to maneuver me in different directions. I also want to be honest. Because I want to know the relationships that I have around me are growing with me. And that I can tell a person like... No, or not even just no, like I really don't appreciate X, Y, and Z. So here I am allowing myself to freely protect myself and I want to see how you respond to my honesty. Are you going to flip out? Are you going to be immature? Are you going to apologize? Whatever the case is, I'm not going to rob it from you. I'm not going to rob you the opportunity to make things right by lying and pacifying you in this situation. So it's already going on 20 minutes in this video, so I'm going to wrap it up. I just want to personally look at me how I'm getting out of breath see what I'm saying I need to go to the gym I just want to personally tell everyone thank you so much for the birthday wishes um the text messages the Facebook posts the Instagrams the voicemails the songs just everything it was just super awesome um I I, I celebrated my birthday I feel like in California because I got to see my baby brother but um my birthday fell on a Tuesday and I had school and work and you know None of the people in the business world were, was looking at me like, did you want a day off because it's your birthday? They was like, oh, happy birthday. You about to clock in? Like, there was none of that. So I'm probably going to celebrate this weekend. I'm going to hang out with some friends, but I'm also going to get some alone time. And if I do, I will vlog that. Um, I do plan to be on here weekly. My goal is to post something every weekend. That's just me being realistic. There we go. Being honest with you all. Um, so if you do have ideas or anything that you think would be a good topic to talk about, um, this will be the style that I probably post the most. Um, I'll try to get different backgrounds, but if I can't, you know, this is what you get because it's about the material, not all that fancy stuff in the background. Um, and so, yeah, just thanks for hanging around. Thanks for visiting. Thank you for coming to see what's going on. I love you all. I hope you're having an awesome Friday and spring is coming. So get them cute outfits out and... I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Please like, subscribe, and share.